Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Beer Geek Nation. I'm here with Chris, and today we're going to talk about a home brewing technique called yeast harvesting. Yeast harvesting. Um, this is a huge money saver. Um, it's especially great for yeast strains that are seasonal and that don't get released all the time. Basically, what you're doing is when you purchase one of those vials of Y yeast or um, like a White Labs vial or you know Y yeast pack or whatever liquid yeast, you're going to use that. And then once you, you know, once that beer is fermented out and you've racked the beer into a keg or into bottles, however you do it, you're basically going to harvest the yeast at the bottom of that bucket. You're going to put it into jars and you're basically going to wash the yeast. Um, and then from there, you're going to get these jars of these, these viable yeast starters. Basically, you're tripling or quadrupling the amount of yeast that you got in one of those vials. So you're saving a ton of money. You can get probably fifty to sixty dollars worth of yeast out of one of those starter vials or starter packs. I'm going to show you how to do that. Really, the only stuff, the only hardware you really need um, are some uh, mason jars, and we'll get into that in the video, which you can get for about fifteen bucks on Amazon. Um, also, uh, dry yeast. I know some people do this with dry yeast. I don't do it with dry yeast packets. Usually the only dry yeast packet I use is Safel US05, and that's like three bucks for a packet of it. People say the yeast isn't as viable. People say, you know, it's just not worth the time and effort. Yeah, it's up to you. Um, I'm not saying one way or the other, but I do it typically with the liquid yeast. I don't do it as much as I should, to be honest with you, but um, like the uh, San Diego Super Yeast, I do it with. A lot of the Saison strains that I like to use, I do it with, um, just so I have them. Basically, you have these yeast starters, put them in your fridge in the jars. They're sealed up in mason jars so they're sanitary. Make a yeast starter and boom, you're good to go. So, and the yeast is really healthy. So, without further ado, let me get into the video and walk you guys through how I, my process of yeast harvesting slash washing. All right, so here are the um, mason jars I was talking about. They're ball brand. One pint mason jars. I got a box of 12 on Amazon for about 15 bucks. Really easy. You can pick them up at Walmart too. Um, I couldn't find a whole case at Walmart though. That was the problem. This is the beer that I just racked into a keg and this is the stuff you're going to harvest from the bottom of your bucket. Next, you're going to want to boil the cans, excuse me, the mason jars. I boil them for about 15 minutes. Um, I'm using six jars here and I will get ultimately down to two. After 15 minutes, you're going to want to take the jars out and you want to fill them with the boiled water. That water is what you're going to be putting into the bucket to um, basically distribute into the cans, and, excuse me, into the jars. And you can see it's a little hard to do with tongs, so be careful. They are very, very hot. Um, once you get them all out and they're filled with water, you just want to let them cool down um, to room temperature. And again, that water is sanitary, so you know it's still boiling at this point, so you do want to be careful with it. It is very hot and I've burned myself multiple times. Um, and you can see here, I'm actually using an of glove. And if you have one of those, they work fantastic for these. <laughs> so again, boil the bottles for the jars for 15 minutes in their own water. Um, and here you can see they are cooling down. The pops of them are going to top are going to the tops are going to pop down. Um, so you know there's a good seal in there. You can see not all the jars are completely full. That's all right. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the um, opening the jars after they've been cooled down, and I'm going to dump four of the uh, four of the jars into the yeast cake there, which you can see. And that, again, that's just the yeast cake from the uh, beer that I racked into my keg. So I'm going to put four of the jars of water in there, which I'm doing like so. Then you're going to stir it up real good. Um, you know, stir it up for, I don't know, a minute to 30 seconds. And then you're just going to let it sit. Have yourself a beer. Firestone Mookie Jack was awesome. So let the... Uh, let that beer sit out, sit in there for about 20 minutes to a half an hour. Let it settle out um, to get some better separation and you can kind of see what I'm doing there. You want to make sure to sanitize everything at this point. Sanitize the spigot. If you're using a carboy, make sure you sanitize anything you're putting into the carboy. Uh, make sure your bottle, your jars are uh, sanitized as well. They should be since they had the boiling water in them there. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just pouring off the yeast cake. Um, and the trub and the water that was in the bottom of the bottling bucket. So I got it into four jars, I believe I do here. I filled the four jars um, and then you're going to let it sit, which you're going to see here in a second. 
Um, you know, like I said, you can get a one gallon jar and that might be a lot easier. Just do it, you know, in the one big one and then separate into the smaller four ones um, once you get the yeast watch. But this is what I had on hand and this is how I do it. Um, really, it is up to you. Again, you want to practice sanitary processes here. Um, have a spray bottle of star sand, which I do have. You can't actually see it in the video, but it is. I'm spraying each of those caps as I put them on. Um, and there's the end of it right there. So you can see all that, I mean, yeast just floating in there. <laughs> it's good to use. So you pop the lids on, make sure they're tight. Yep, there I am spraying down the tops of the lids once the jars are all filled. So you see the four jars there. Um, it's a little hard to do with one hand in front of the camera, so I apologize. <laughs> so we're putting the jars ready to go. Da, 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 da. And a lot of that is going to be trub, um, trub left over from the beer. It's not all yeast, which I'll show you here in a second. So this is the washing process, basically. From here on out, you're just separating. Um, I came back to that lid later. I realized it wasn't on straight and I just couldn't do it with one hand. Um, basically here, you're going to be separating the, there you go, the four jars. Thumbs up. All right. Come back and there they are. And that is the start of the washing process. And basically you're going to let them sit. I let them sit for about half an hour to an hour and you can already start to see the separation there between the trube and the yeast. The trube is at the bottom there. The yeast, most of that's still in uh, suspension and it's going to be for a while. So these are the other two jars that I had with the sanitized water. I dumped them out. Um, this is the second stage in the washing. So I spray down a paper towel with um, star sand, put the lids on there. And then you're going to want to dump the top part of the separated uh, yeast at this point. You want to leave most of the true behind as much as you humanly can. Um, I poured a lot into that one just because I wanted to make sure there wasn't a lot. So you can see the separation there. You want to get all of the more of the liquid part and leave that white part at the bottom behind because that is the trube since it did separate. And this was after about half an hour. I probably should have let it sat more and it spilled it everywhere, which was awesome. So I do that to do two jars into one jar. Uh, that's basically how I broke it down. Which you can see there. Um, you want to fill the jars up um, and remember which jars are which afterwards. So I sprayed down the lids again. Again, sanitary practices. Just make sure everything's clean. I almost screwed that up there. Uh, all right. And the beer in the background is actually the beer that I made with this yeast. So we're tightening them down. And I realized I did cut it there, but I realized, and you can see the separation there, um, the beer and then the white stuff on top is the yeast and the more darker tan on the bottom is the leftover trube. Um, so you can see that a lot of yeast in there, still a lot of trube and I could have done it again, but I didn't bother. And there's the ones that I poured off. And there's after about two hours. So you can see the bear, the yeast is that white level and the lowest level, the tan level is more true. You could again, pour it off again um, and get better results. But I've found this works absolutely fine. And that is yeast washing in a nutshell. You do wanna make a yeast starter with this just to be safe, but that is it, friends. That's yeast, start, yeast Washing 101. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave a comment. Or if you have any further suggestions as to your process or how I could do it, maybe even you know, a better way, um, let me know. So with that, I hope it saved you some money. And remember, folks, life's too short. Brew amazing beers. Cheers.